Good morning and welcome back to the workbench. I am going to be building a truss rod today so I thought I'd document it for you. I, someone had asked a while back about how I make them so I thought oh, maybe now it's time to do one. Uh, parts I'm using is uh, 3 16 uh, round bar or uh, cold rolled bar. This one happens to be a zinc coated. Um, I've used both uncoated and it doesn't really matter. It's just that that's all I had in the rack at the time. Uh, 3 8 inch anchor and these are the blanks for the adjustment nuts. I just have an extra one there. Um, and I'll show you how I go through the process. I use a 10 30 second uh, thread. I tap and die for that and but the only thing missing is the washer that'll go in with the adjustment nut. So you guys wanted to see some actual machining happening so I guess I'll have to get to uh, showing you that. All right I'm just gonna start my uh I'm using a 532nd uh, drill bit and I'm just drilling into the blank for the anchor. Nothing too exciting there, pretty straightforward. You probably all worked with a drill press and a vise before. I'm about ready to drill the um, hole for the, the nut. Uh, once the hole's been drilled and tapped, I will add a uh, countersink to that to help locate the truss rod as I push the uh, nut in to catch it and start uh, threading it. So we'll just get that done and uh, move along to the next step. Remember to keep your um, drill bit lubricated so you don't uh, create too much heat. All right, my next step is I'm gonna dish out uh, the back end of the uh, anchor so that I can add some, uh, file in some teeth so it has something to anchor into and bite into the wood. And you just watch this process. Pretty simple. I'm using a 3 8 bit. Uh, I don't have a mill or machining uh, drill press or anything like that. So I'm just uh, working with what I've, what I've got. So that part is done. We'll take it over to my bench and we'll file in some teeth. Okay, here's a close-up shot. I've done one uh, set of filing uh, passes on the, the first set of the valleys for the, to create the teeth. I'm just using a three-sided uh, file. And I just go around. I do eight. No, I do four, uh, four sets. So I uh, create eight teeth. And I just keep going at a 90 degree. Yeah, we'll see if we can get a shot of that. And there we go. That's all I'm doing, just filing it down to a, a depth that I'm happy with. And see, begin to create teeth. Anyways, I'm going to keep going and we'll show you the finished product. Okay, here's the finished anchor. Well, partially. I just need to thread it now. You can see the teeth, they'll go into the, in this direction, into the um, neck and it'll grab into the maple and dig in and bite and it'll hold it in place for proper uh, anchoring. Uh, we'll go on to the uh, threading. Alright, here's a shot of the tap going into the uh, thread. This is a 10 30 second uh, tap. And uh, I'm just going to continue on. Uh, most of you, if you've been in through your shop programs, will have probably done this. So there's nothing to really show you that you don't already know, probably. Um, you just uh, work your way around. And as you're going around a quarter turn, you bring yourself back. And you just keep working your way through. You take your time, keep it well lubricated. You shouldn't break a bit or a die. All right, I'm working on the uh, truss rod right now, doing one of the threadings for the anchor end. Um, you can probably just slightly see the taper. 
what I do is I do about a half a turn clockwise, quarter turn back, just to break off the um, the cuttings and keep it nicely lubricated. Anyways, I will keep going with that and get that done, and I'll show you peening in the anchor and getting everything else prepared for uh, installing into the neck. All right, so I finished uh, doing my anchor and threading. You can see that again the taper to start the threading. And we'll just put this puppy on. Clean it up, of course. What I'll do is I'll get this nice and tight, and then I'll uh, file it or grind it back down slightly, and then I'll peen it so it doesn't uh, come off. It won't be able to uh, spin in any in any direction. Okay, the anchor has been installed. I have peened the end. Doesn't look real pretty. I just use a center punch and give it a few wax just to flare it out over top of the uh, opening so it won't spin off and it's nicely tight on the threaded uh, portion of the truss rod so it's not going to move anywhere in that direction. Now I just need to work on the nut end and continue on. Alright, this is the nut and I'm going to be cutting in a slot for adjustment. All I have is a 3 8 hole with a a slice and I use my hacksaw and I just run it till I get to a depth I'm happy with and then I widen it with a Dremel tool with a little uh, sanding uh, disc or grinding disc to get it to the width that I want and I'll probably drill possibly drill a small hole right down the center just to uh, help clean out some of the uh, filings that may still be in there so that the threading doesn't get uh, wrecked or uh, worn down too soon all right, here's a shot of the nut. A little more polishing up to do. Uh, you can see the uh, slot here. Wide enough for a good size uh, slot uh, screwdriver. I used to do a, a Phillips uh, version, but because these necks come right off anyways for adjustment, I only need the single slot. Um, my nuts, the nuts here are a one inch nut. Normally I think they're seven eighths, but I give it a little more length for a little more uh, grabbing on threading and I think we're good to go I just need to uh, length, uh, get the length for the truss rod and do the uh, other side uh, threading and then she'll be ready to go here you can see a bit of the bevel uh, to locate the rod and we shall continue okay here is our finished truss rod all I have to do is throw in the <clears throat> the washer Here's our anchor, and I have to give it a bit of a rate uh, bend to it. There's the nut, and I will install that shortly, and I will have to video that as well, of course. But this is uh, just the making of a truss rod. Pretty simple machining processes. Uh, probably have all the tools you need in your garage to do it, and anything you do need is pretty. Uh, inexpensive taps and dies aren't too much and the material the rod itself I think is a couple bucks where I source it anyways and 3 8 rod <clears throat> there you go I hope that was informative and helpful and we will move on to all the other little projects uh, I'm working on bye for now